All right, thank you everyone for joining us. So today we are talking about asthma and how it relates to the current school closures. So we have two Elk Grove Unified School nurses joining us today, Jackie Curtis and Dee Dee Jones. Thank you. Thank you for having us. So Dee Dee, let's start with you. So why are we talking about asthma? So asthma is a huge issue right now because it is summertime and it is allergy season. Allergies oftentimes can cause asthma symptoms, but also considering the COVID-19 crisis going on, asthma symptoms can very well mimic what looks like COVID-19. For example, shortness of breath and cough. Those two symptoms are scary when we start experiencing them, but if we know that it's our asthma and that we're doing what we can to manage it and keep it under control, then we can know that we're safe and that we are taking care of ourselves so we're at lower risk of catching the disease of COVID-19. Right, so Jackie, could you please tell us what exactly is asthma? So asthma is a health problem that makes it very hard to breathe. Um, this happens because uh, the airways in our lungs swell up. They fill up with mucus and get smaller. So some people say having asthma is like breathing through a really tiny straw. If you have asthma, you're not alone. Um, just like Dee Dee and I, we have it, and lots of kids have it. And many students take medicine to help them breathe better. And with the right medicine and care plan, asthma won't slow you down. So Dee Dee, what happens in asthma? So with asthma, when we, we, okay, so we breathe thousands of times a day. All of us do, right? When we breathe, in through our nose, out in through our mouth, whatever, you know, part of our face we decide to breathe through, it goes through a tube called our trachea. But when our trachea um, disseminates into our lungs, there are these tiny branches that connect to our lungs. Those branches can become narrow and thin, filled with mucus, like Jackie said, and then that makes it very difficult to breathe. It can cause us to have wheezing, coughing up uh, uh, mucus. Uh, and it can cause many problems down the road, especially if we're not taking care of it right away. So basically, like Jackie said, it's like we're breathing not only from our face, but inside of our body and our lungs. Everything is just constricting and it makes it very difficult to breathe. Well, wow, this is actually a very interesting topic that we're discussing because I don't really know much about asthma as I've never had an asthma attack myself. So Jackie, what exactly is an asthma flare? So with asthma, asthma doesn't make you breathe harder all the time, just sometimes. And this happens because the airways get more irritated than normal. When this happens, it is called an asthma flare-up or attack. You'll know you're having a flare-up if, when you have like a whistling sound when breathing or wheezing, um, you have, you cough a lot just to try to get it out. You have a tight or painful feeling right in the chest. Um, and flare-ups can also make you sweat or feel like your heart is beating faster than normal, even when you're just sitting down. And an asthma flare-up can still get worse if a student doesn't use his or her asthma medicine as directed. So it's really important to follow up what your doctor says and how you should take it. Okay, so what triggers or even causes an asthma attack or flare-up? So for many folks, allergies, pollen in the air, dust in the air, cold weather, sometimes even hot weather. Basically, when our bodies are out of balance, some folks that have asthma are more sensitive to when our bodies are out of balance. So if there's an allergen, such as a pollen, to a specific kind of grass in the air, you breathe that in, it's going to cause inflammation, such as those narrowing of your uh, your breathing tubes and such. Or say, for example, if it's cold outside, you're breathing in that cold air, so your body is naturally more sensitive and trying to warm itself up by creating that mucus and causing that inflammation to heat itself back up because your body is out of balance. So with knowing your triggers, some folks, cold is a trigger. Other folks, it could just be dust. It could be uh, the weather itself. It could be pollen and specific allergens, even dogs and cats. Wow. So Jackie, how is asthma treated? So caring for asthma uh, means two different things. Avoiding it every, the things that cause those flare-ups, which Dee Dee just talked about, and taking medicines if your doctor prescribes them. 
So avoiding those triggers. And once you know what those triggers are, you and your parents can take steps to avoid them. Um, so here are some ideas. You can change, in, just, and they're very easy. Change your sheets and vacuum often to rid home of your of dust. Keep your pet out of your bedroom. Um, if you are allergic to pet dander, uh, stay inside on days when pollen counts are high. That could be just simple as checking the weather report. And if exercise makes your asthma worse, the doctor may prescribe a medicine so you could take that before exercising and that helps prevent the airways from tightening up. Got it. So Deidre, how do we, you know, all learn how inhalers are used with or without a spacer? Well, when your doctor prescribes the inhaler for you, uh, they honestly, they really should go through it in detail on how to use it. Sometimes though, that first appointment, you get the prescription and then it, you get it and you, it, it's easy to forget. Um, there are a lot of great videos on YouTube um, if you ever have you need a reminder, but otherwise I'm happy to give a quick demonstration on how to use an inhaler with and, with, with and without a spacer. So first things first, this here is called albuterol. This is a rescue inhaler. This is what we use if we feel an asthma symptom coming on. Now, the inhalers that come in this tube, sometimes they're blue, gray, or red, such as mine. I like to label mine because I have another inhaler that is also red, so I like to make sure I'm using the correct inhalers. They come in a little vial such as this and you put it inside. When you first receive your brand new inhaler, it's important to do what's called priming it, and that's where you squirt it. You push on it two times to make sure that there's no step, um, extra air inside that what you don't need. But when you use this without a spacer, and if you can get a spacer, I highly recommend it. It's important to make sure that your tongue is not in the way, blocking the hole. It's very common where you use this and it just goes onto your tongue. It doesn't even go into your lungs. So I'm gonna demonstrate and walk you through how to use your inhaler with no spacer first. So first things first, you wanna shake it for 10 seconds. Shake it good. Sing a little song in your head if you have to. Now, when you put it in your mouth, it's important to make sure you empty your lungs out. So you want to take a big deep breath in. <sighs> empty out your lungs so you're out of breath right now. When you oh, put it in your mouth, pretend like you're going to take a deep, deep intentional yawn. <gasps> that way your tongue, ah, it's not blocking the direction of the medicine going into your lungs. So, You want to breathe it in nice and slow. When you puff it, you should breathe in over the course of two to three seconds. So when I breathe it in, I'm counting to three. And then you want to hold it in for 10 seconds, like I'm doing right now. Eight, nine, 10. <sighs> now you might feel a little tingly in your fingers. You might feel your heart race a little bit. That means you got it, and that's good. Now, if you feel that you still can't breathe well, give it a few minutes and then do it one more time. And if after two times it doesn't work in 15 minutes, you should probably go to the doctor. So again, to recap, it's important to make sure that you breathe it in slowly, move your tongue out of the way and pretend like you're going to yawn and slowly yawn in the inhaler and hold it for 10 seconds. That is super important if you do not have a spacer. Now, if you do have a spacer, which I highly recommend because this will help you make sure that you're doing it correctly. They oftentimes might look like this. They might come with a mask, which goes over your nose. Uh, it might be yellow, it might be pink, it might be purple. I have a fancy blue one here. So all you do is you stick your inhaler inside this large hole right here. And again, you wanna shake it up for 10 seconds. Now my asthma's not acting up right now, so I'm gonna to pretend to do this one. Cause that one puff really worked. <laughs> all right, so what you do, you shake it for 10 seconds and what you do, again, empty out your lungs. <sighs> Place your mouth on the mouthpiece and all you do is breathe in regular. You wanna breathe in for six or seven times, but nice and slowly again. If you hear this sound, if you hear that squeak, that means you're doing it too fast, so your spacer is telling you to slow your breathing down. Do that for um, six or seven times, one or two times, and then that you should feel this immediately. Again, you'll feel those tingling in your fingers, you'll feel your heart race a little bit, and you'll be able to breathe much better. Um, I highly recommend using a spacer because you have that guarantee it's not going to get all over your tongue and stuck in your mouth, it'll go straight to your lungs. So 
I hope that helps. I hope that helps. Wow, thank you so much to the both of you. And to find out what the air quality is each day, feel free to download the Sacramento Region Air Quality app on your mobile yes. device. Thank you so much to both Jackie Curtis and Dee Dee Jones, two Elk Grove Unified School registered nurses. Thank you so much for having us.